My name is John Anthony Fiermonte. That's F-I-E-R-M-O-N-T-E. And how old are you, John? 80 years old. What year were you born, the date you were oh, born? Oh, 225, 31. 1931. Mm. And where do you live, John? I live at 38 Francis Street in Auburn, New York. When, when did you enlist in the military or were you drafted? I, was, uh, I enlisted in December of 1950 okay. in Syracuse. Yeah, and uh, what, uh, did, did you have, uh, what, what, uh, what branch did you join? I joined the United States Air Force. Air Force. What, what was your specialty? I was a senior automotive mechanic. So you took care of all the vehicles? All the vehicles, all trucks, all cars, anything that had wheels on it. <laughs> did you uh, go from destination to destination? Did you learn any, was there any basic training that you did? Oh yeah, I went to basic training uh, at San Antonio, Texas. When did that occur? That occurred when I enlisted. Okay, 19 what, 50? 1950, yeah. Okay, and uh, from there, how, how long were you in basic training? I had about six months. Six months. Which really, they pushed us too fast. Yeah. But... Uh, What'd you do with basic training? Uh, I was, they taught me how to use a rifle, you know. I went through a ground uh, tactics, you know, movements. Okay. Did you go from destination to destination during basic training? Did you go to just one place? No, just one place. One place. I put, man, I done guard duty and all that, you know. Okay. Uh, did you have any additional training for mechanical work? Uh, you said that... Not uh, there, no. No? That you had known it already? You had known mechanical work? No, I learned it. Where'd you learn it? By myself, you know. Oh, you learned it by yourself? Oh, yeah. There was no technical training by the Army to work on these no, vehicles? not at that time, no. Okay. Uh, were there any stories you'd like to tell us about or share with us about your time before shipping out to Korea? You went from basic training in what state? I went to Montgomery, Alabama. But basic training? No, from basic training. Okay. They flew me to Montgomery, Alabama to an air base called Maxwell Air Force Base which is uh, the Air War College of the Air Force. Where's that? It's in Montgomery, Alabama. Okay, and you stayed there for how long? I stayed there for three weeks and then they shipped me to a satellite station, which is seven miles across town, to a field called Gunter Air Force Base. Okay. There I was uh, attached to a 3861st Air Installation Squadron. Uh, what I mean by that is the air installation is, has to do with everything, fixing radar, fixing refrigerators, anything you got. So they call that air installation squadrons. Okay, so when you... Uh, I was assigned to a... Uh, Fort Bragg. Fort Bragg. As a yardmaster. What's the yard master? Yard master, you take care of all the trucks. Make sure they, when they come back in, after you're using them, they're washed. I didn't wash them, but somebody washed them. I seen that they were washed, cleaned, and then the hoods go up. And all night the hoods go up and they stay up until inspection in the morning. Oh, I see. Um, now you stayed at this uh, yard. Did you ever go to Korea? Sure. When did you do that? I went to Korea in 1952. So from 1950 to 1952, you were in uh, the United States? Right. And in 1952, you were, uh, how'd you get there? How did I get there? Well, I went to uh, California. I shipped on a ship. We went from ship we went up to, along the coast to Seattle and picked up 1,500 more troops in Seattle. And then we went right straight to Japan. The total amount of people on that ship was 5,000. 
5,000 troops. 5,000 troops on that ship, yeah. Wow. And we got in the middle of the ocean on, a, oh, I'd say maybe the 14 day, because it takes 17 days to get there. We hit the storm. It laid the ship on its side. And we were stuck for a while. But the ship began to sink? No, it's on its side. She could have sunk, yeah. Oh my God, what did they do? Tell everybody to go to the other side of the ship? Oh, well, I don't know what they did, but uh, eventually, you know, the, the storm subsided and uh, we went on. We were supposed to stop in Hawaii, we never got there. Uh, we went right into Japan. So you went to Japan? Yeah. And how long were you I in landed, Japan? We landed in Yokohama Harbor okay. in Japan, which was a. Uh, Nice scenery, really. Beautiful mountains in Japan. I mean, from there, uh, we got, you know, we had a few classes, and next thing I knew, I was a transport plane going to Korea. Classes in what? Oh, uh, you know, don't look around with the people, with the girls, and don't do this, don't do that. So instructions, Yeah, they're all instructions. Warning you know. instructions? Yeah, and they want to make sure that you act like a, you know, a man instead of a dummy, you know. Before you shipped out of Japan? Oh, well, yeah. Okay. And they told us all about, you know, the food in North Korea, South Korea. You know, just don't eat this, don't eat that, don't drink the water. So you were in Japan how many days? Oh, about two weeks. Two weeks. And after two weeks, how'd you get from Japan to Korea? They flew me to Kempo Air Basin and just uh, southeast of Seoul. Okay, so you went basically south of Seoul. Yeah, it's not too far. It's about 14 miles from Seoul. Mm -hmm. And what'd you do when you got there? They put me on a truck. They trucked me into Seoul, this side of Seoul, in a little village called Yangdung Po. There where the tents were set up for my my outfit, yeah. And when you got there, what was your job? My job was to drive a wrecker, a four and a half ton wrecker. What's a wrecker? A wrecker is a vehicle that picks up trucks and cars that are disabled. Uh, the truck was a four and a half ton uh, Lord French wrecker, which I had a, had a special license to drive. It was a pretty big vehicle. Yes. It had air brakes, you know, and everything. So it had like yeah. 10 wheels, 15 wheels? Or? Oh, it was pretty big. I don't know, I can't remember the wheels, but I know the boom was 18 foot. So it had a big like tow truck kind of thing? Yeah, well, it is a tow truck. It's a big and tow truck. I used to pluck cars out of the reservoirs because the streets were so short, you know. The streets aren't wide in North Korea, South Korea, they're just narrow. A lot, of guys, a lot of guys went off into the ditches. A lot yeah, of them got hurt, up and got hurt. Oh yeah, a lot of them got killed that way too. Mm -hmm. I used to pluck them out of the reservoir, bring them in. And, Which uh, reservoir? I can't remember. I think it was Chosen Reservoir. It was way up north. Okay, so you were you were up at the Chosen Reservoir. Well, yeah, was, well, a lot, our outfit was all over South Korea, North Korea. What would a... Uh, so you were in basically near Chosen Reservoir where you would Yeah, pick and up most of this was done at night, uh, no daylight. Pick them up at night. Um, sure. What were your impressions when you got to Korea? What you first saw? What was, I mean, it had to be uh, either a shock or something. What, I was what did sick. you see? I was sick. I cried. Why'd you I, cry? I don't know. I just, I don't know what I'm doing here, you know. This is crazy. All I seen is mountains and wind and dust and everybody's running here, running there, you know, just like maniacs. And how old were you then? How old uh, was I was 19. 19, so you were a youngster at 19. And you 19, I sat down and I cried. As soon as you got there? Yeah. Because you couldn't believe you so were there or the just the conditions? I, I said, what the heck am I doing here? This is crazy. There's nothing but mountains here. What am I fighting for? Then I realized, you know, that these people in North Korea are crazy people. <laughs> they want to take over South Korea, so. 
What were your impressions of what you saw? I mean, you saw the mountains. Did you see villages? Did you see oh, I see the villages. What did you see? Village, villages were made mostly all shacks. I mean, there's no houses there, no living quarters. There were people were outside of the caves cooking, you know, and uh, the housings were just nothing but boards put together and just just one mess. You just felt sad for them or just felt Well, sad? I felt sorry for them. I felt sorry because they had no food. No food? Yeah, had no food, no. If it wasn't for the United States, they wouldn't have had nothing. They'd all died starvation. Did you see any fighting, John? I didn't actually see combat, no, but uh, we were 10 miles away from the front lines. I can hear the big guns going off. Did you see any uh, men come back wounded? No, I didn't see that. Um, I've seen uh, I've seen one truck back up in the ammunition dump and he drove over a, drove over one of the bombs and blew up blew up the whole ammunition dump. Did anybody get hurt? One got killed. One lost a hearing. In the in the yard. In the, in the yard. yard. In the yeah. yard. It, it, you know, it's, it's it an happens. accident. Well, it happens because of the, when the, when they backed up the tr when they backed up the trucks, the South Koreans they had working there, they guide the truck in. And they forgot that the shell was on on the ground there. They oh, drove right over and blew the truck up. On. Oh, blew the whole ammunition dump up. Did you get to meet any allies there, Turkish, South Korean soldiers? You talked about the one South Korean soldier backing up the truck. Did you hear, did you see any other allies, Canadians, English, Turks? No, i never seen anybody in it. Just the South Korean Army soldiers? South Korean Rock Army, you call them the Rock, R O K, yeah. Okay, and uh, did you hear anything about the allies and how they participated or? Or helped out, or mm, uh, all I heard about it was that what our armies were doing, like the Eighth Army. You know, they were building bridges, they were doing this, they were, you know, rebuilding, trying to rebuild everything so we can get supplies up, up were the, north. With the bridge parts at your yard, did they put them on the trucks that you were in charge of, or did the, did the trucks bring the bridge parts from somewhere else? Oh well, no, the bridge parts they came through us. They came by ship, okay. and, and and like I said, they transport up things at night. The so we had satellite places all over Korea. I mean, not, not only my outfit, the fifth was all of South Korea. So, so your men would take the bridge parts on the trucks that you would yeah. maintain. In other words, I uh, was awarded a presidential citation, but actually I didn't participate in that. Bridge, you understand what I mean? Right, right. You just well, my outfit did. Right. So everybody got the presidential, right. green presidential citation. When were you discharged from the military? I got discharged in 1954. Do you have any paperwork on discharge? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, have? I have one right here. I, I served. Can you show us the piece of paper and hold it up for the camera? This is my 201 file. What is that? This is a 201 file. What's a 201 file? It's a file about everything that I've done in the service, from the job. Can you, can you read a few things on it? Oh, first? sure. First of all, my name is on the top of it, my serial number is on the top of it. My MOS, which is my job, was a 47151, which means I'm a senior automotive mechanic. And it goes to say that I am a senior mechanic. On the 21st day of October 1953, I was released from active military duty. And because I was released, it was because the, the United States budget for the Air Force was going bad. So they released a lot of us, okay? They released me in 1953 and then put me in a reserve, Air Force Reserve, called an active reserve because of the fact that 
Anytime they wanted me, they, all they had to do was send a letter and that's it. I'd have to go. So all total, the state right here, all total I had two years. Let's see. I had two years. Two years, ten months, and one day of active service. In Korea? Yeah. Two well, years, one day, and, you said? And the service is complete. Okay. 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 And uh, for pay purposes, I had got in the reserve, which they gave me seven years, ten months, and one day total. Seven years? So in other years. words, if I, if I had re-enlisted, they would give me the seven years, seven years, ten months. Credit. Ten months and one day credit. Wow. Or if I got a federal job, I could have gotten. And you, what year was you discharged? Well, I was discharged in 1958. 1958. Yeah, and that's when my papers came through here. It says right here. Uh, yeah, 1958. So that gives me all that time. John, when you uh, returned to America mm -hmm. from Korea, what was was there any impact that you remember about your service there? Uh, how people respected you, disrespected you? Uh, what do you think the people thought about you being there? Well, they were glad to see us. They were sad when we left. You know. The South Koreans, but uh, you know, or the yeah, Americans. they were yeah, they were they were sad because uh, you know we were leaving. But then on the other hand, they kept sending troops in to replace us. But they took a blessed time about it because they were in no rush. They were well protected though, pretty good. Um, uh, did the American people have any animosity about you going to Korea? Was there any, you know, we just got out of World War II. No, I know that. No, because uh, I, I, I think they called it a, what, police? Police activity, you know. Yeah. No, I think uh, American people, you know, they just like to see you help other people. Mm -hmm. We're noted for that, anyways, you know. Okay. Um, so, when you returned, was there anybody saying anything to you at the shop or at home that you were there? What'd you do there, you know? Oh, you yeah, there? they asked me, you know. Of course, my mother was. Glad to see me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, did you return to any familiar things that, when you returned, did you go right to work? Did you just take time off? Well, couldn't find a job, really. I took anything at that time. I, I went to work in a Columbia Rope, which was a Columbia Rope factory, and they made rope, but I couldn't stand it there. You went from, from the military, you went right to a factory? Yeah, I didn't want to collect. I could have collected checks, you know. How long did you work at the rope factory? About a year. And what happened then? I left there in uh, 1955, I got married. Okay. Oh, you were married before you were discharged? No. You get discharged well, I was married after discharge. Oh, what year did you get married? 55. But your official discharge papers say 50... 58. Okay. So. I worked in the laundry. I used to deliver laundry in a laundry truck. Oh, because you were still in the active reserves. Right. So you got the married. Job didn't pay nothing. So you were yeah. in fifty-five. You got married. Paid fifty dollars a week if if I was lucky, and I said, "Geez, I got to do something." You know. So anyway, my wife and I. She had the first child. And What's her name? My wife's name is Helen. Okay, and you had your first child. What year? Uh, fifty-six. And uh, the child was born premature, but she fed that baby right through, boy. And uh, I tell you, the, the girl today is she's 55 years old and, and real healthy. But anyways, we bored. She bored three children, two boys and a girl, mm -hmm. which I stopped at that, I guess. 
Do you, do you have any animosity towards the opposition, the Russians or the North Koreans? No, nah, I don't really. You know, I just can't understand what the hell they want. Anyway, these people want, you know. Like North Korea, why you got to bother South Korea? Why don't they just mind their own business, you know? If they want rice, can't they grow it? <laughs> the Southern Korean doesn't. You know, Southern Koreans don't bother that way. You got to bother South Korea. <laughs> and, you know, it's been 60 years since you've been in the Army, oh, so do you, ever, do you ever think about Korea and what happened over there now and then? I'd like to see what it looks like. They tell me it looks beautiful. You'd like to go back? I, I think so, and I don't know if my wife would let me or not. Why don't you go together? Well, I don't know. I don't know if she'd like that or not, really. And, uh, you know... I can't even get her to move to... Port Barley, you know, I'll go to Korea. <laughs> what, what would you do if you were young today and another war started out similar to Korea or we were going to protect some country? What would what would you do? I don't know. I'd tell them to take me in and I'd enlist. You, 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 you would enlist? <laughs> I, I would enlist if they take me. They ain't going to take me. I mean, no, but if you were young then? If, you if were I was young, young I, I'd go. You'd go? I, I'm not, Just like you, you know, did before? I have no fear. I lost that a long time ago. What do you mean you lost your fear? I lost my fear. I went to work for a sheriff's department, you know, in a custody department. Uh -huh. And uh, the first week out, uh, I said, what am I doing here? You know, these people are nuts. <laughs> really, they're crazy. I get used to it, you know. Okay. They had um, some good toughies in there, I'll tell you that. Toughies where? In a county jail. Oh, you, where you work? Where, where, where I was working, yeah. I was in charge of, I was a sergeant on a second shift. Mm -hmm. And uh, I only had three men in there. One female working for me. Today they got over a hundred and some odd people working there. It's doing the same job I did. Was there any message you'd like to give to the future generations uh, who'll be listening to this interview today about the war or anything? I tell them to join the army, join the air force, join the navy, join the marine, join anything you want. As long as you get there, there's no better place to be than in the service. Believe me. Why's that? Well, you can get all the education you want in the service. You get free insurance, you get medical, you got free insurance, life benefits. You get all the meals. They even pay you for apartments, they, if you're married. They pay you for this, 30 days vacation. Where can you go and get a job like that? No place. What the? Uh what can you say about the legacy of the Korean War veterans? We hear about heroism in World War I, heroism in World War II, uh, Civil War. Uh, we don't hear much about the Korean War veterans. What, what can you say about the legacy of the Korean War veterans you knew and yourself? What could you say about those soldiers? Well, they've done the best they can, you know, being in, in, up there in the front lines, the, uh, you know. You just done the best I can. It's all against all odds and yeah, against all odds. Sure. I heard that the equipment wasn't as good as it could have been. No, I mean uh, the carbine was worthless to me. But Why is that? Yeah, it was a, I think it was an absolute gun myself. Mm -hmm. What but about the armament? Was the armament old or un some of them? Uh, yeah, they used some a lot of the World War Two. You know. What about the trucks? Were the trucks? Uh, well, you worked nah, on the they were modern, modern or? Nah, they weren't the best in the world, but. Did old technology or? Well, yeah, they were They were kind of old, but we, we, we repaired them. Mm -hmm. So you were able to repair them pretty good with the knowledge you had? Uh, oh yeah, running. well, if we needed parts, we used, to, we used to have a couple of people fly all over for parts. Fly, you mean, what do you mean, fly? Fly out to Japan or? Any Russia, if they had to, to get, the get parts. parts. <laughs> sure. Now, you have uh, brought a lot of photographs, history, uh, other papers. Uh, 
Why, why are they important to you? Why are those pictures and... It just reminds me I was in the service, you know. So I, I, I don't know, I even had the map of South Korea and North Korea. Then. You have that with you today? Yes, I did. Gave you, it. Uh, did you show it to anybody yeah, today? Yeah, I showed it to the guy that interviewed me in there. Okay. Um, is there anything else you want to say to, uh, to people, to kids in the future? about your time there, uh, family, oh, yeah. anything? War is a bad thing, you know. I don't wish we had, you know, another war, but it's uh, going to be another war someplace. Mm -hmm. So you might just well, you know, be prepared. We hear about this term, the forgotten war, and we also hear no, about the term did. police action. What do you think about the word police action? I don't like versus that. I don't like that at all. War. I don't think I don't think he should have says police action. You know, because that man up the front lines. You know, did more than what a policeman does. <laughs> mm -hmm. They were shot at. Period. You know. So the word forgotten war should not be and used. Not, not only that, they were in conditions that were real. Uh, Sixty below zero. You know, is isn't. isn't not too good to fight in, in that kind of weather, you know that. You're in the snow, they froze their feet. Uh, a lot of them died. How could we uh, tell people about the Korean War and not to forget it? How could we do that? Well, I think <laughs> one way of doing it is to get a better army, you know, get, get more men in the service. And start building a big, bigger, better, and bigger army, mm -hmm. and then we'll be prepared for good, you know, mm -hmm. like we did with these uh, guys that bombed the towers, you know. What do you What do you mean? Well, if we wasn't alert now, you know, after bombing the two towers in New York City, you see what we done? We started to build up a little. Yeah, so we can fight against them. So um, far, we've got the whole shooting match in the in the hole now. Yeah, <laughs> this this project's gonna probably be televised someday. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you like to say to the people? Uh, there isn't too much I can say except hey, God bless us. <laughs> God bless us. That's right. You did what you had to do, and that's it. You know, I was proud to be in the service. I like the service, really. It's, a, I think it's beneficial to a lot of kids, you know. Instead of taking drugs, it's sit on the street corner and starting fights or stabbing people. So a reason to Yeah, you might just enjoy the army. You'll make a man out of there, but you don't want something wrong. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, thanks, John. It was a wonderful Thank interview. You. I'm glad you came. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm.